an ode to Mo. We got to do that. And also, player number four on a top five list of possible first time Pro Bowlers with the Lions. Let's do Locked On Lions today, shall we? You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's well, happening, everybody? Locked on Lions, Locked on Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you on this, a Tuesday, July 12th, and a Wednesday, July 13th. Thanks for listening, making us your first listen each and every day right here on Locked on Lions. Thank you for watching as well. If you are following us on YouTube, please subscribe to the podcast. we got to get up to 1,000 subscribers at least on this Locked on Lions YouTube channel. We appreciate you watching and participating as well. You can follow us on Twitter. At Dairy Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, and also the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. Coming up on the show today, indeed, we have to discuss uh, the. I'm not, I'm not going to go through a whole life and times and tell you that I knew Gary Moeller, but I have a story that is so lion esque involving Gary Moeller, who passed away last night at the age of 81. We'll get into that coming up on the show today. And also, Started our yearly list yesterday that we always do in the offseason, usually in July, of the top five players that could be potential for this season, first-time Pro Bowlers as Lions. Yesterday, we gave you number five. Today, we give you number four. We will do that on the show as well today. Appreciate everybody chiming in and participating, whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, We've been at this show for now six years. Um, I believe we're closing in on my six-year anniversary at Lockdown, and I love doing the show, and I appreciate the listenership and the audience and all of that. Um, Go back, let's do this. Go back to the year 2000. Bobby Ross, a little bit on the hot seat. Lions in a little bit of disarray. But yet, here's Boss Ross, Bobby Ross, off to a 5-4 and season and decides to retire, basically quit. through nine games. A bit of a surprise, certainly. There were some fans that were glad to see him go. Of course, Ross had taken the Lions to the playoffs in a couple of previous seasons. It did not work out. The former Super Bowl coach was done in 2000, nine games in, yet the Lions were in playoff position at 5-4. and four. Now, there were other candidates to take over the team, yet William Clay Ford Sr., the owner, Along with, I believe, Chuck Schmidt. I I don't. I'm trying to remember if Chuck Schmidt was there on his way out, or already had been let go. But Mr. Ford decided to give Gary Moeller, the former Michigan head football coach, who was the assistant head coach and linebackers coach, the interim tag for the rest of the season. I can remember this like it was yesterday, at the Silverdome. Gary Moeller, who everybody beloved and was very popular at Michigan. Of course, his ending at Michigan uh, was not pretty. Uh, Drunken evening and all of these things. And so Michigan washed their hands of Gary Moeller. He was an assistant for many years in the NFL and got an opportunity to come to Detroit to work for Bobby Ross and was, again, the assistant head coach and linebackers coach. So Gary Moeller gets the job as interim coach that season. And the team actually responds to Moeller, plays pretty well, and goes four and two under Mo to be sitting at nine and six with one game to go. And the Lions in week 16 were hosting the rival Chicago Bears, who came in at four and 11. And all the Lions had to do that day was beat the hapless Bears, and they were going to go to the playoffs as a wildcard team. So here's Gary Moeller. Everybody's thinking, he's going to get the job. The Lions don't ever fire anybody. Here's Mo. Everybody loves him. He's been in the building. He's about to take them to the playoffs. There's no way, no way they can lose this game. Back and forth game. About two minutes to go. The Lions are losing. They, they fail to score a touchdown inside the red zone and have to settle for a short Jason Hansen field goal to tie the game at 20. Here come the Bears. They lead. They head down the field. 
They get down to about the thing or so. And here comes um, Paul Edinger, the former Michigan State Spartan and rookie kicker for the Bears, kicking to, I believe, the north end zone um, at the Silverdome, the end zone opposite of the, um, uh, the tunnel. And he knocks through a 54-yard field goal to beat the Lions. They end up 9-7, and seven, and they do not make the playoffs. The Bears end up 5-11. and 11. Just everything that you probably would have imagined would happen to the Lions happened to the Lions that day. And now there's some discussion about whether or not Gary Moeller deserves to keep the job because they gagged away the last game of the year against a bad team. And I'll never forget Mark Champion's call. He was doing the Lions radio at the time. Snap down, kick is up by Edinger, and the season's over. That was the call. He didn't say split the good. He just said kick is up, and the season's over. Yeah. So, fast forward, Bill Ford Jr. gets involved, of course, with his dad as the Lions are looking for new leadership. Gary Moeller is still in the building at the Silverdome. All right? Still acting as the interim coach. The Lions hire Matt Millen, courtesy of BFJ, Bill Ford Jr., who really thought that Millen could come out of the broadcast booth and run a football team. We know how that turned out. The worst general manager maybe in the history of professional sports. Millen tells Moeller to hang on, doesn't fire him right away, doesn't announce he's hiring from the outside. And his first interview as head coach, I, I believe he might have interviewed Moeller, I don't remember. But he brings in Marty Morningwig to interview for the job. And I'll never forget this about Gary Moeller. Rest in peace to Mo, 81 years of age, passing away last night. Gary Moeller was such a good soldier and such a class act. He was in the building at the Silverdome the day that Millen is showing Morningwig around and interviewing him. That was Matt Millen's first real big mistake, and he made so many. Wouldn't you have called Gary Moeller that morning or the night before and said, hey, Gary, don't, don't come into the office today. All right? This is not like the facility at Allen Park that, was, that is so big that you may avoid seeing people. This was the Silver Dome where there was the, the, the kitchen, the food room, the media room, the lobby, the hallway. There, was, there wasn't a, a big giant block of offices i mean there were offices but here's moeller walking around and here's millen interviewing Morningwig to take moeller's job basically at the same time and gary moeller never complained he never publicly chastised millen like god this was a pretty weak move i'm, I'm in the building and he's interviewing other people while i'm there and i never forgot that about Gary Moeller. It was classy to the end. He didn't up, end up getting the job, of course. Morning we got it. Marty was a disaster. Rode off on his motorcycle. And Moeller went off to Jacksonville and other places to be a linebacker's coach, a defensive coordinator. I think he ended up working for the Bears, too. But I never forgot that about Moeller. He never always took the high road, never ripped on Millen, never said a bad word about the Lions, despite being in the building the same day Millen interviewed Morningwig. And then Marty was... Supposed to go to Cleveland to interview with the Browns, him up before he could even leave to take the Brown to interview with the Browns and had him as the Lions head coach. And of course, the rest is history. So, but Gary Moeller passing away last night at the age of 81. I figured I'd share that story because I never, ever forgot it. Ever forgot it. Uh, we're going to talk about the current edition of the Lions and a player that I think has a chance to be a first time Pro Bowler. We will do that coming up next. What about bet online? If you're interested in gambling on games, whether it's baseball, golf this weekend, MMA, boxing, whatever it is, we're getting ready for preseason football. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including everything that's going on in Major League Baseball, tonight's Tigers Royal stuff, whatever you're looking for, it's there at Bet Online. They are your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including Live betting, esports, 
and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. You want the odds as well, the futures for, for NFL and all that stuff. Check out. Uh, you got to check out BetOnline.net. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, so yesterday we started our annual list of the five players that I think have a chance to make the Pro Bowl for a first time as a Lion or just first time period um, this year with the Detroit Lions. Again, as I said yesterday, when we mentioned Romeo Aquara as player number five on the list, and I'm going to go from five down to one, meaning five least likely, one most likely to be the Pro Bowler this year or a Pro Bowler this year for the first time for the Lions. Now, this will exclude Jared Goff, Jonah Jackson, TJ Hawkinson, the punt god Jack Fox, and Frank Ragnow, who have all been Pro Bowlers before, both with the Lions and, of course, Goff was a Pro Bowler uh, twice quarterbacking the Los Angeles Rams. Mentioned yesterday's guy, uh, none other than Romeo Okwara. And the reason I mentioned Okwara is he's had a double-digit sack season in his career. He's had two very good seasons with the Lions, a seven and a half sack season in 2018 and the 10 and a half sack season in 2020. Last year got hurt towards Achilles. And I think if he comes back this year and um, can get to the quarterback, He's got a, a resume already. It will certainly help his, his chances to maybe grab a Pro Bowl nod. So I put Romeo Quara at number five. Number four on my list for Lions, it would be first-time Pro Bowlers, and he's on the list every year I do this. He's on this list every year I do this, and that is none other than Taylor Decker, left tackle for the Lions. Seems like Decker has been in Detroit for 10 years. It's actually only been six. But Taylor Decker last year was the fourth highest graded Lion player from Pro Football Focus, actually. He had a grade of 75.3. Only behind Frank Ragnow, his teammate on the offensive line, Amon Ross St. Brown, the wide receiver, and right tackle Penny Sewell. Decker finished with a 75.3, which is excellent. It's a very good score. And he is an individual that every year seems like you put him at left at left tackle and he's solid when he's playing, when he's not hurt. Um, he can, you know, do, I was going to say do it all, but he's a solid run blocker. He's a solid pass blocker. He's not spectacular. You can maybe name off the top of your head one or two games maybe where Decker really has played poorly. I think there was the Bears game a few years ago where Khalil Mack ate him alive and he was hurt, didn't play well. But you put Taylor Decker at left tackle and you're in good shape. He's a leader. He's been voted captain multiple times by his teammates. And um, Pro Football Focus gra uh, graded him out last year as the 22nd best tackle in all of the NFL. That includes right tackles and left tackles. So this is a guy with a track record who I think is a really good football player. And he signed long-term. He wants to be here. He's a leader. Um, last year, of course, he was hurt to start the season. And um, there was talk that maybe Decker would be moved to guard or even to right. Panay Sewell was a first-round pick, of course, just like Decker was, but higher. And everyone's like, oh, Sewell's playing so well left tackle to start the year that maybe Decker is not the left tackle. Yet, the minute Taylor came back uh, from injury last year, they put him right back at left tackle, they moved Sewell back to the right side, and everything worked out. The Lions had a pretty good year up front with their offensive line. Obviously, it didn't equate to victories. But I see this guy, I, I'm a Decker fan. I mean, he stayed here, he wants to be here. Um, solid, dependable. And why can't he take the next step in year seven this year, and make a Pro Bowl. If this Lions ground game is going to be as good as we think it's going to be, and if this offensive line sticks together, and you can get 16, 17 games of Decker, Jackson, Ragnow, Vitae, and Sewell consistently 
with, of course, some depth like Evan Brown and, 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 and some others. Um, I think this offense can take off a little bit, and I think that Taylor Decker can make a Pro Bowl. Um, there's a lot of good tackles in the NFC, Trent Williams and others, who are really good players, and I know it's tough to, to, to make it and to get into a Pro Bowl, but Decker's a veteran, man, and he's got cachet. He is dependable, solid. I, I know he's not spectacular by any stretch, but it is rare that a quarterback on the Lions, whether it was Matthew Stafford or Jared Goff, it is rare that a quarterback really has to worry about their blind side. Maybe Decker's not the greatest run blocker of all time. Um, I think he's a better pass blocker. But when you're ranked 22nd in the league by PFF, and you, so you're a top 25 tackle in the league with 32 teams and 60-some-odd tackles out there, Decker's in that first first tier or close to it. And I think he has an opportunity this year to take that next step and possibly make a Pro Bowl. So Taylor Decker makes my list of top five Lions who have never made a Pro Bowl, who could be first-time Pro Bowlers this year. Um, It's amazing to me because we've done this podcast for six years. We've done this topic in the summer forever, and yet Taylor Taylor Decker's always on the list because he's never made it. Um. Not sure why. I mean, I'm not sitting here telling you, oh, yeah, and 2020 was great. I mean, he's had some really good years. And I really think playing with Sewell and playing next to Jonah Jackson, who made the Pro Bowl last year, can only up his his game. So Taylor Decker is uh, number four on my list of top five Lions who could be first. One quick nugget to wrap the show up. We'll do that coming up next. First, our friends at Rock Auto. With ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter is ordering the parts on their computer? You have a computer at home. You know, let's go here with what you can get at rockauto.com. Go on your home computer or on your phone and go to the website and get what you need at rockauto.com. Save time, save money. When using Rock Auto, why choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is $353 from a chain store. Rock $116. That's it. It's a family business serving do-it-yourself for over 20 years. Rock Auto for every customer. They get everything you need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go to their website, rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car, truck, and write locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. All right, final thing here on a Tuesday edition of Locked on Lions. We did connect with Colton Pouncey from The Athletic of course, is the new Lions beat writer, and he's hopefully going to join us uh, tomorrow or even next week um, as he's moving, I believe, from Lansing to uh, to, to Detroit. So, um, again, if you missed it last week, Chris Burke is uh, stepping back to uh, become an editor at The Athletic and work on their draft coverage. And um, so for now, um, Chris is still writing at Colton Pouncey, the Michigan State beat writer for the Athletic is going to be the Lions beat writer come next season. Um, I'm not crazy about mock drafts for next year already, uh, but my man Nathan Litke hit me up yesterday. Uh, I like to refer to Nathan as the uh, executive producer of this very program. Uh, anytime Nathan sees something on the internet, he sends it to me. And this was the 24-7 Sports and USA Today 2023 NFL mock draft and they have the lions. They have CJ Stroud going number one of the Texans, the quarterback from Ohio state and Will Anderson from Alabama going to the Falcons at two Bryce young, the quarterback from Alabama and the Heisman trophy winner going third to Seattle. So I'm scrolling down looking for Detroit and I get to number six. So USA today and 24 seven sports predict that the lions will have the sixth 
worst record in the NFL. Let's hope not. And they have the Lions taking Anthony Richardson, the quarterback from Florida. They write, quote, Richardson Garner's top 10 love, according to some NFL evaluators, heading to his first full season as Florida starter at quarterback. Arm strength is a positive, as well as Richardson's ability to move outside of the pocket and make plays with his legs. Blah, blah, blah. It'll be a major factor this year. So it, it it's funny to me how everybody outside of Detroit, and I'm not going to give you the rest of the mock draft, and I know I'm a big Will Levis fan from Kentucky, and he went, I think, in the 20s. So this is Anthony Richardson, who I don't know a ton about. I've, I've watched him play. But it's funny how every mock draft for next year has the Lions taking a quarterback first, no matter if they're picking second, sixth, whether it's Young, whether it's Stroud, whether it's Levis, we told you about a couple weeks ago. Now it's Richardson. It's almost like nobody nationally believes that this season, 2022, will be the year of, of Jared Goff and that everybody believes that next season the Lions – will be taking a quarterback again. Or not again, take, taking a quarterback, period. The Lions don't ever draft quarterbacks, it doesn't seem like. I'm just going to warn everybody again. I think Jared Goff's going to be the QB this year. I think he's going to be the quarterback next year and beyond. I truly believe that. Unless he just falls on his face. Now, the Lions could draft a quarterback in the first round um, this coming year. And then he could sit for a year, that, and golf could be there again. It's possible. But it's just funny how every mock draft for next year already, everybody has the Lions taking a quarterback. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Making us your first listen on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Lions. We will talk to you again tomorrow.